Well, hey, you guys, welcome to the Connection Point Worldview podcast. My name is Ron, your host. I'm here as always with Pastor Trey Shigley and Dr. Zach Breitenbach. They make up our worldview department at Connection Point Christian Church in central Indiana. And this is a podcast that's helping just kind of bolster your faith and process areas of the Bible or tough questions of apologetics that might help you, your students, uh, family, or friends. This is a burning questions edition, which means we've been submitted uh, some questions that we're trying to work our way through and give uh, just a few minutes of thoughtful biblical answers to help you uh, in your faith or maybe answer a question uh, that a friend has in your life. So, uh, Dr. Zach, what's the question you've got for us today? Uh, It says, I'm in a small group uh, where a person who professes uh, to be a Christian and attends a church will will interject their convictions and contradict me. Uh, And so I I suppose the question has to do with, well, how should I respond to that? How should I think about that? Okay. Um, And so... And we've all probably had that at some point, right? You get yeah. in a small group and uh, or a Bible study or some sort of class and sure. you try to share and somebody else has always, you know, got their opinion or stepping on you when you try to share, if not, right. yeah, contradicting. That can be yeah, hard to, we, to navigate. Yeah, we don't all see things the same way. Uh, now, certainly they, they shouldn't be interrupting you. They shouldn't be uh, rude to you. This is something, if that's going on, because uh, it talks about how they interject. Well, that that's something in itself, regardless of what the issue is and what their position is in yours. Like they shouldn't be uh, rude to you. They shouldn't be interjecting. That's something to talk about with them directly. We had a question uh, uh, that came in about uh, kind of dealing with believers that they'd go astray, and that this would apply to Similar. them too. Uh-huh. Yeah, it's like you. you you go one on one. You talk to them directly. You address it in a loving way, in a tactful way, not in an aggressive way. They shouldn't be interrupting you, right? But then beyond that, maybe they're not being rude to you and inter, inter, uh, you know interrupting you, but yet they're they're constantly you know chiming up when you make a comment and they're they're giving a different view and they're maybe saying you're wrong, but they're not even being rude about it. They're just disagreeing with you a lot. Mm-hmm. What should you think about that? Well, one thing I'd say is really, and this is something I'm, I, I say about myself too, because it can be hard to do, and I, I'm not always perfect in this, but, but try to be teachable and consider whether they might be right, right? Mm. So maybe they're speaking up because they, they care about truthfulness in your small group, and they, they just think that some of the things you're saying may be a little off. And rather than, there's a tendency sometimes in small groups where you may not think somebody said something that was right, but you don't want to correct them because you just don't want the awkwardness. So you just let it go. And then there tends to be a lot of like false statements that get made over time in a small group, especially if there's newer believers. And so if you're a more mature believer, you know, you probably should be speaking up and correcting things. Hopefully not in a way that says, hey, that was that was the dumbest thing I ever heard. You know, yeah. <laughs> it should be more like, hey, you know, well, that's an interesting thought. But hey, well, what about the Bible says this and try to, you know, try to turn it in a better direction. Try to consider whether maybe that this person might be right. Uh, really be teachable and have an open mind. But but what if um, what if they're not right? What if you're convinced that they're not? Well, I, I think you just you want to talk to them about this and right say it seems like we disagree, you know, on a lot of things. And maybe you talk through some of that specifically and try to get uh, an understanding of where you're you're different. That can lead to truth, right? Like differences are not always comfortable. And we all just prefer to always agree and get along and, and have unity like that. But sometimes iron sharpens iron and differences can actually lead you to greater truth. It can be good for you and your learning. It can be good for them. I like that. It can be good for the whole group to, 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 to have this hashed out in front of them where they can all learn from this. Now, sometimes that's for the best mm-hmm. to, to have it in front of the group. Sometimes it's better to take it offline. Uh, it just depends on how you handle disagreements and how that other person handles the disagreements. And if one or both of you is not going to handle this well, it's probably not going to be edifying for the whole group to hash this out in front of them. (laughs) You you just want to take this offline. But if if you both can handle it, it can be great. Mm -hmm. I mean, I love going to a Bible study where somebody, two people might have different views and then I can chime in. I'm like, oh, that's interesting. Who do I agree with here? And, you know, and that, that it's better than just people say this, people say that, and we all just 
ignore anything that could possibly agree outwardly to, but inwardly going yeah, oh, i don't believe any not, of this yeah it's not good for your small group so <laughs> yeah so those are some of my thoughts but be tactful to them and they should be tactful to you and and uh yeah trey what do you think yeah i think um situations like this are great opportunities to grow in humility uh, because even if you are right um there's still chances to be humble to show grace um, but there's a good chance maybe you're wrong. And I think a lot of times I want to reject something that someone said because I didn't like the way they said it or the situation they said it in. And I'm rejecting really uh, their posture and not really the facts of what they said. And so what humility does is it allows you to separate the truth of things from the context that they came to you in um, and to be able to say, like, man, they did not respect me. When Like two things can be true, right? They can be disrespectful and true, mm-hmm. um, disrespectful and right. And so um, if you can kind of disconnect those two things, like, man, I was not respected. They were rude. But you know what? What if I'm wrong? And what if they, what they said has some truth to it? Um, and I really think like humility, um, will take you, well, first of all, will make your life so much just happier. If you get offended by every person disagreeing with you, and I'm not saying this is what this person is like, but, uh, humility allows you to just take things and just let it not bother you. And it's, it's a wonderful gift. Um, and humility is also the key to learning. If you are never humble, you will never change your mind and you will never learn and grow. And so, um, it's yeah. also it's also key if the other person that this person's talking about is a blowhard that can't keep their mouth shut. Yes. Humility would be the answer too. So yes, absolutely. The, the point is humility wins all around in and, this and, situation. You know, scripture <laughs> talks about how God opposes the proud but gives right. grace to the humble. And I would rather be wrong and humble yeah. than proud and right because uh, <laughs> God is going to be opposing the proud person and <laughs> uplifting the humble one. So if you're going to pick one or the other, you, sh- you should have both. But um, uh, humility is the thing to shoot for, really. So That's great. Well, and two, um, typically a small group would have a, a leader or a facilitator. And then yeah. um, this would be an appropriate conversation if maybe it's inappropriate or you feel uncomfortable going directly to the person. While that is the best course of action, then um, if that doesn't work, make sure you get your leader involved and uh, if the leader uh, isn't quite enough, then you can always go to the pastor that's over uh, the small groups at the church, too. Yeah, I think that's a great point and an encouragement. Maybe a lot of people leading this are small group leaders, um, not leading this, uh, listening to this. Um, and it's hard as a leader. And when something awkward happens, you just want to let it go. Mm-hmm. But for the sake of your group, step into some of those like harder conversations afterwards. And if someone is taking over the dialogue or being rude to each other, you have the responsibility as the group leader to have a conversation on the side with that person and encourage them to treat people with more respect or to open the floor for more dialogue. Um, And it's going to be an awkward conversation, but it's going to be for the best uh, for your group. And so uh, step into that with the grace of the Holy Spirit and help of the Holy Spirit. And it's going to make your group experience so much better. Another good one, guys. Thanks so much. Well, if you've got questions for us, head to connectionpoint.org slash worldview. Click on the questions tab, and then you can submit your questions right there. If you have other needs, connectionpoint.org is a good starting place to get more information about the church. And in the meantime, a couple of things. Would you mind sharing about this podcast with a friend? Maybe give us a review, too, as that helps people find us. And please know, in the meantime, we'll be praying for you and your family. God bless.